Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So a couple weeks ago, I saw this tweet saying that we don't always give Hottie her flowers for how iconic and how hilarious she was on Flavor of Love. And while people definitely still remember her and still talk about her, I do have to say that I agree that she is a little bit underrated. She was great TV too, and anytime she and New York were in the room together, it was just chaotic and it was honestly television gold. I don't believe I'm going home tonight, so I'm not even going to dip into those feelings. Who do you think is going home tonight? All right, I wouldn't mind if New York went home. You guys aren't gonna talk about me like I'm not in the kitchen. I'm stiff competition. If she were to ask me who do I think is going home, I would you say know that what? I don't I'm think I'm not gonna tell you to sugarcoat home. it, but speed it up because I'm not gonna give you all my energy. I'm no. gonna eat my food I'm, and then get I'm ready for elimination tonight. Hottie was born Shatara Safira Taylor in 1971, making her currently 51 years old. Shatara's mother was a psychiatrist and she said that helped her learn to analyze people and also to empathize with them and not judge them. Prior to Flavor of Love, Shatara actually tried to make it as an actress. She was in High Roller, The Stu Unger Story, which appears to have been a small role because the role was unnamed. She also had a small role in Gilmore Girls and a role as a bikini babe in an episode of CSI Miami. Aside from acting, Shatara also had theater and choir experience. Shatara was on another reality dating show called Blind Date. What do you do out here? Actually, I'm a real estate investor. I own properties like up and down the East Coast, and I am so passionate about finding a really good deal. That's what I like to do. It's a lot of fun. Girl, we have a little bit in common, and I'm, I'm in the real estate myself. Really? I'm a mortgage broker. Oh, really? Cha-ching, yeah. cha-ching. <laughs> she explained to get these auditions, she would drive around LA and wear different wigs and different outfits and play different characters in each audition based on what she felt like the show needed. To get on Flavor of Love, Shatar played an over-the-top character and gave the most over-the-top responses possible. Flavor of Love premiered in 2006, which is when most of us were introduced to Shatar, who was nicknamed Hottie on the show. Flavor of Love was a reality TV show from the mid-2000s in which a group of young women competed to be the girlfriend of rapper Flavor Flav. Much like The Bachelor, the girls competed in challenges and tried to win private dates, with one girl going home each week. Instead of receiving a rose to remain in the house, the girls received one of Flav's iconic accessories, a clock. The house was full of characters for sure, but second to New York, Hottie is likely the most memorable. She always had a relatively calm and collected attitude, despite her hilarious one-liners that made her sound completely detached from reality. Life with Flav would be a lot of fun. You can tell by his clothes, like he's a touch like, of an eccentric too, so I think we'd get along really, really well. And I have some 34 double Ds, which are all natural. I think that those are total assets to attract his attention. Initially, Flav appeared to be into her, and she even got the first clock on the first night. Hottie did her best to remain in his sights and keep his attention, and mentioned she wasn't above sabotaging the other girls. In her words, the mansion was her house, Flav was her man, and his money was hers. Obviously, Hottie and New York were adversaries, as they both had big personalities and were both there to win. I don't know if I can say there for Flav, though New York had her moments, but they were definitely there to win. The two got into frequent arguments during their shared time in the house. Uh -huh. Now, this is close to the master bedroom, close enough to Flav's. That does not play a part in any of my plans, uh -huh. because once everyone is out of the house, uh -huh. including you, uh -huh. um, I'm thinking about making this room into a study, but I want to see what he feels about You know, things. I'm already having plans for that room to be a library. Uh -huh. You see, I have, this is the his and her suite. Well, his this is one, this one on is the other perfect side, for the study. And this one is the hers. I already have the queen mm -hmm. size bed. There's space here for Flav if he'd like. Mm -hmm. I have a hat there on the left for him to come and, you know, utilize this room whenever he'd like. Likely their most iconic one is when Hottie told New York the girls were jealous of her because she resembled Beyonce, to which New York responded she looked more like Luther Vandross. Are you out of mind? Beyonce, sweetie, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that an ugly ass bitch like this would even say that. Oh my God, are you f***ing just saying Beyonce? 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 You know, what you, you know who you really look like? You look like Luther Vandross. Another memorable moment of Hottie's was when the girls in the house were tasked to make a chicken for Flav. Hottie said she was unfamiliar with cooking chicken because she grew up vegetarian. But still, she had to be aware that a whole chicken couldn't be cooked in the microwave. She also had to be aware that someone wouldn't even want to eat a cooked chicken with a carrot and some marshmallows and noodles sticking out of it. I think this was one of those moments where it was clear that she was putting on for the cameras or just wasn't bothering to take the challenge seriously. Hottie later admitted this, saying, I was raised as a vegetarian and I'd never prepared, let alone touched a raw chicken before. 
I like winning, so when I realized that a fried chicken challenge was one that I'd never done before, I decided to go at it another way altogether. Keeping ratings in mind, I threw some jelly on it, some mushrooms, lo mein noodles, marshmallows for eyes, and a raisin smile. Then I threw it in the microwave. It was the number one episode for the year. Hottie also just had other hilarious moments, like when she said her obvious hair extensions were her real hair. Hottie, how long was your real hair? This is my real hair. Oh! You know the extensions in there? Oh, this is it. No, right here. Can I see? Absolutely not. It also came out in her lie detector test that she wasn't 25 like she claimed, but in fact 35. According to the test, she was also lying about not being there for fame or money. Have you ever been on television before? No. Do you want Foofy Foofy for his money? No. <laughs> Stop. Honestly, hats off to Hottie for being able to do all of this with a straight face because I could never. Eventually, she was eliminated on episode 6 of Flavor of Love. Flay felt that she was there for the wrong reasons and was gold digging and looking for fame. The thing about Hottie was that it was never really clear whether she was putting on for the cameras or she actually believed her delusions. I feel like New York was a little bit detached from reality as well while in the house, but she still seemed a little bit more grounded than Hottie. But despite how she may have appeared on television, Hottie was mentally stable. The contestants were required to complete some sort of psychological screening prior to appearing on Flavor of Love to make sure that they were mentally fit to be in the house. I'm not quite sure what the nature of this evaluation was or what deemed potential contestants unfit. But apparently in real life, Hottie is a low-key genius. She graduated from UPenn back in 1992 and did her grad work at the Peabody Conservatory of Music. She's also an American Legion scholar. So it makes sense to believe this whole time she was masterminding her time on the show into a career. At the very least, with her already having an Ivy League degree at the time, she definitely wasn't as clueless as she acted on the show. According to Hottie, she saw her time on reality TV as an acting role and used it as practice as well as exposure for future roles. And I'm glad for the confirmation that she was acting because it was clear something was up as soon as she made that raw chicken for Flav. Hottie's IMDb page actually refers to her time on Flavor of Love as her portraying a comedic character. I don't want to get too, too into her time on Charm School because I'm planning to do a whole Charm School deep dive eventually, but I have to touch on it, of course. On the first season of Charm School, Hottie kept on with more of the same. She still made her offhanded comments, or should I say lies, such as claiming several times that she descended from royalty. Charm School combined girls from the first two seasons of Flavor of Love and was meant to reform them and teach them etiquette. They competed in challenges testing their manners and their responsibility, and the show was hosted by Monique. Each week, the girl who grew the least was expelled and sent home. During the show, Monique made the girls use their real names, so Hottie was called Shatar while on the show. She had some humbling moments on Charm School, like when the thrift store said her clothes smelled bad or when the girls put her dirty underwear over her bed. But that was only done because she stole one of the contestants' dresses and then lied about it. I'll, I'll, I'll bottom line it. I won't even just, I won't mince words. Hiding things and stealing things, that's not even part of my game. You said it was! You said it was a possibility! She eventually got eliminated after she was accused of stealing again, but Shatara claimed she had been set up. Some of the girls had framed her for stealing a picture by putting it under her mattress. Since it was caught on camera, Shatara said she felt that elimination was unjust. She said had it not happened, she could have easily won Charm School considering she won all of the challenges. However, Shatara also said she understood reality TV was about strategy, and the girls had just plotted against her, and it worked out this time. Shatar has always maintained that she doesn't regret any of her time on the two reality TV shows. She said about this in 2017. Of course, the beautiful spirit, mind, face, innocence, body, and voice are all for sure the real me. The character Hottie can be whatever fantasy you want her to be. She can be any age you want her to be. In real life, I'm a girly girl vegetarian from Boston who got an A plus in physics who loves creating jewelry pieces and luxurious handmade dolls with big beautiful eyes. I'm honored that my face and name and voice are recognized globally. I stay humble because this kind of influence in pop culture is power. After her time on reality television, Shatar tried her hand in some dramatic acting roles. She appeared in a few short films and had minor roles in some feature-length films. She also continued to make appearances as Hottie on other reality TV shows like New York Goes to Hollywood, and she also appeared on 106 and Park. Shatar also dabbled in pop music, releasing a song in 2008 called I Love Balls under the name Moneybanks. 
Music wasn't that new of an endeavor for her, as Shatar was a trained songwriter and she used to teach music theory. She also claims to have a five octave vocal range, which she might because she trained in opera in undergrad. In 2013, Shatar co-founded her media company, New Vista Studios. Their website boasts the company's expertise in content strategy, marketing consultation, interactive technology, and media training. They also offer services in animation, mobile games, and interactive learning videos. That same year, Shatar also married her husband, Maxie Collier. Ironically, she said her parents knew each other over 30 years ago, but she and Maxie had only met by coincidence in 2012. They're still married, and Shatar shares a lot of their adventures and their life together on her Instagram and Twitter. It seems like they attend a lot of premieres and a lot of media-related events together also. I don't believe Shatar has any biological kids with her husband, but she is a stepmom to Maxie's son. In 2017, Shatar wrote a book called The Kinky Side of Perfect under the pen name Star Sugarman. The description reads, who would have guessed that Roxanne Redmond, the geeky girl next door, a perfect princess with every hair in place who prefers owning patents to collecting Prada, would stumble into the profitable, erotic, kinky world of webcams? Join this professional lady on her journey as she discovers her own sexuality while facing the perils and challenges of treacherous co-workers, dysfunctional family members, and two-faced friends. The Kinky Side of Perfect has a 3.5 out of 5 star rating on Amazon. Shatar's author about page reads, Inspired by the works of legends such as Zane, Anais Nin, V.C. Andrews, Corinne Superhead Steffens, Bob Guccione of the Penthouse Forum, and E.L. James of Fifty Shades of Grey, she dances to the sexy beat of her own drum like the great luminaries Madonna, Pam Greer, Vanessa Del Rio, and Betty Page. Shatar's biggest dramatic project so far has been a musical called Amulet of Love. She wrote, produced, directed, and starred in the short film. Shatar produced Amulet of Love through her own company, and it's a story about a famous yet jaded singer and a businessman who eventually fall in love. There's also a soundtrack available on iTunes and Amazon Prime. Amulet of Love had a very mixed reception. One of the Amazon reviews read, There are a lot of good short films, but this is a different kind of terrible. I seriously cringe maybe the first two minutes of watching this. I'm surprised I watched the whole nine minutes of it. Maybe the reason I got through it was because I was appreciating that something is worse than my life. Shatar also spun her chicken fiasco into yet another television opportunity. In 2018, she premiered her show Poultry Princess, which aired on Fox, CBS, NBC, and ABC. It's also available to stream on Amazon Prime. The show is based on the recipes from her cookbook of the same name. Shatar has also acknowledged that she's no longer a vegetarian because she does eat chicken. Shatara said that her husband's family has taught her several recipes since she appeared on Flavor of Love and served that raw chicken, which she said people still ask her about to this day. In the show, Shatar cooked various forms of poultry, and chefs would also video call in from their homes to cook as well. Some of the recipes she made on the show included chicken teriyaki, sesame ginger chicken, and matzo ball soup. Unfortunately, Poultry Princess only lasted for one season. At the time, Shatar was also uploading recipes to her blog and to her Twitter. The following year in 2019, she appeared on The Doctors to show off some of her healthy microwave recipes. Shatar still does interviews about Flavor of Love and Charm School and still speaks fondly of the experience. Just a couple months ago, she did an interview with Goldie and they reminisced about their time together on both shows. Goldie said the conversation was nostalgic and they talked deeper about some of the behind the scenes stuff. Shatar admitted she lied in the audition when they asked if she knew who Flavor of Flav was, so she was surprised that that's who they were competing for. She also said that as a reality TV show contestant, you have to maximize each day since you never know how long this show is going to be or how long you're going to be there before you get eliminated. Each day, she went into filming with a clear objective to maximize her screen time. This explains the lying for no reason and starting drama for the sake of knowing the other girls would bite. Shatar also said that she told Flay from the very beginning that she was just there for ratings and considered her time on the show to be a job. Because he knew she was an actor, Shatar said that there wasn't much romance between them. Her whole time she was on Flavor of Love, Shatar said that she was basically improv and treated the things that she would come up with to say as lines. 
Over time, she said that she was able to figure out which role each girl in the house had been cast to play, and once she figured out what role New York was cast to play, it was easy to get a rise out of her. She also said that's why it was easy to not get her feelings hurt, because the things that were happening on the shows were happening to her character Hottie, but not necessarily happening to her personally. I think Hottie definitely will go down in television history, if she hasn't already, as an unbothered queen. She set out to make a name for herself and she 100% succeeded. And even though she was basically trolling her entire time that she was on Flavor of Love and on Charm School, she still had a bigger picture in mind and you can tell that she was someone who was actually strategizing and knew how television and knew how the entertainment industry worked. And like New York, they were both smart about being strategic and creating a character or a brand for themselves. That way they could use their time on Flavor of Love, which arguably was just a small spot on a television reality show, into a launch pad for a successful career. And I also commend Hottie for being able to stand out in a house with New York because she is a huge personality even when she's not acting and she's being herself. And I know Hottie got to be on the Charm School spinoff, but it also would have been cool to see her sort of get her own show, probably something in the vein of I Love New York or even New York Goes to Hollywood. It would have been fun to see and follow Holly's journey. Holly. Hottie's journey try to make it as an actress, especially someone who actually had experience in the business. I think one of the best things about Hottie was that she was able to take a joke and just didn't get bothered or let things get under her skin. And she's also very easily capable of just laughing at herself and going with the flow. And I also love that she appreciates being a meme and the fact that she recognizes that she's entertained people over the years and will still engage with them and still talk about the experience and doesn't regret it and isn't embarrassed by it. So down in the comments, definitely don't forget to let me know your favorite hottie memes or your favorite hottie reality TV moments. And you know what? Also, let me know that if hottie ever did get her own reality TV show, what sort of concept do you think it should have had? Should it have been like a dating show or should it have been another cooking show like what she had? Let me know what you think. As always, thank you all so very much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you can stick around for more. If you want to keep up with me there, make sure you also follow me on Twitter. And if you'd like to become a channel member, you can click the link in the video's description. I'll see you dolls very soon. Bye-bye.